We see our lead protagonist, Anzu Hoshino, arriving home with a video game package in her hands. She heads into her room and plans to spend her weekend playing it. Soon, Anzu realizes the game isn't what she purchased. Suddenly, a mysterious wizard-like creature pops out of the TV and congratulates her for being this game's first test subject. He reveals himself as the wish-granting wizard, Riri, who helps people out with romance. He asks Shira when she last developed feelings for males, and she gives him the name of two game characters. Riri scolds Anzu but promises to grant her a life that plays out like an otome, romance-themed game. He explains the multiple outcomes she can find herself in with a real man, making her more interested. Anzu notices Momohiki is missing and Riri explains to help her focus on her romantic mission. He's confiscated her cat, video games, and chocolate. She thinks he's bluffing and checks her belongings. Unfortunately, Riri was telling the truth. He says until she develops a thrilling romance like those found in his game, she'll never have access to her favorite items. Upon rubbing it in Anzu's face, Riri reveals that they're testing Anzu to see if they can solve Japan's dwindling population crisis. That said, Riri promises to help Anzu find love, so he can solve Japan's problem and claim a wealth check. Riri vanishes. Anzu rushes to the living room to ask her mother where her cat is. While Anzu begs Momoshiki to come down from the air conditioner on her ceiling, her father and mother inform her that they'll be gone for a few years, meaning she'll be living by herself. She's flustered by everything. She can't believe her parents would force their high school daughter to live alone. Riri reveals that he was responsible for all her life changes as Anzu beats him up. To make matters worse, all the shops in town have either closed or no longer supplied chocolate that help her calm herself. Enraged, she vows she'll never fall in love with any Eichmann, good-looking man she encounters. She hopes her effort causes Riri to give up and leave her alone. When departing a store, Anzu accidentally breaks a man's phone. When she makes eye contact, she discovers he's one of the Eichmann. Startled, Anzu apologizes and flees. The next day, she heads to school with Riri accompanying her. He reveals that no one can see him besides her, and that he's created an illusion spell so that she can talk to him without looking crazy. He knocks her to the ground, and he vanishes. The Eichmann from the previous encounters bumps into Anzu. She realizes Riri knocked her to the ground to set up a romantic scene between her and the Eichmann. One of the Eichmann's friends arrives, and we learn that the male Eichmann's name is Sukasa. Sukasa doesn't bat her any attention and leaves. He gets approached by a girl who wants to hand him a letter, but he rejects her. Anzu's surprised that he's a jerk despite being a nice-looking person. As she overhears his mean-spirited replies about the situation, she doesn't know how Riri plans to hook her up with someone like him. At lunch, she chats with her friend about Sukasa. While other girls bombard him with questions, she tries her hardest to ignore their conversation to avoid getting attached to him. At home, Anzu's bored out of her mind and runs into a cockroach minutes later. She doesn't know how to get rid of it but recalls the time her mother used spray to murder them. Unfortunately, she ran out of spray. When the roach leaps at her, she rushes out of her home and into the streets, screaming. It starts raining and she decides to hide under a bare-looking playground attraction. At the park, she bumps into Sukasa, who offers her his umbrella to help her avoid getting wet. Anzu believes this is a part of Riri's plan to get them closer, so she denies his offer. After some bickering, he holds the umbrella for her, as they head to Sukasa's place. At Sukasa's place, Anzu conjures a scheme to dream about attractive video game characters to avoid falling for Sukasa. However, that attempt fails instantly. She was surprised by how chilled Sukasa was and never thought she'd see him smile. It's clear she's falling for him as she uses her cat to blunt any feelings she has. He assumes she's avoiding him because she destroyed his phone. He tells her it's okay because he'll replace it anyway. At Anzu's house, he searches for a roach who previously scared Anzu while Anzu's distraught at the fact that an Eichmann is in her house. She tackles him to the ground because she thinks the bug is nearby. But it turns out to be a lens and they end up in a position which some would say is questionable. Suddenly, the roach is spotted which scares Anzu when Tsukasa manages to destroy it. As he departs, he reveals that they're both high school freshmen and asks her not to ignore him while they're in school. As Tsukasa attempts to leave, they discover a severe rainstorm brewing in her city. He decides to crash at Anzu's place for the night. Anzu cooks up a meal for them as they both are hungry, and that's when Riri shows up. She slams him into the wall of the frying pan and asks Riri if he's responsible for all of this. He confirms he planned everything from the roach to the store. Anyway, she finishes up with a soup and they help themselves to it. Anzu knows feels that it's useless to avoid the love trap and plays along. She asks Sukasa to stay at her place and he accepts. She gives him her father's clothes and lets him take a bath. 
When he's out of the room, Riri appears and taunts her more. After she finishes her bath, she enters the living room sporting a nerdy getup. By looking unimpressive, she can avoid any romantic contact with Tsukasa. She taunts Riri, who finds her strategy smart. They end up playing a board game resembling the game of life since it requires no strategy and full-on luck. The loser must make the winner's school lunch. Riri tampers with the games and makes her get the big L shiz about to prepare the meal when Tsukasa helps out and they both make omelets and beef wraps. His wraps turn out really good. Tsukasa confirms he works a part-time job as a chef at a bar. Although she likes having him as a friend, she makes sure to avoid falling for him. Anzu tells him that she's not falling for any of his tricks. Riri bonks her head with his flower wand, putting her to sleep. Tsukasa enters the room and tries to wake her up. After several attempts, he gives up and decides to leave her resting. He ponders how much fun he had with her. Tsukasa watches Anzu sleep as she's dreaming about her Momohiki, which transforms into a cat-like muscular Eichmann. She woke up realizing she slept on Tsukasa's lap all night. Tsukasa departs, and she notices he forgot the packed lunch she made for him. She wants to give it to him at school but hesitates because she doesn't want to draw attention from others. Tsukasa appears at her place, saying his place is flooded, obviously the work of Riri. He asks her for her phone number, when she gives the lunch as well. Anzu slyly shares her number and lunch with Tsukasa using a goofy bag to ward off his fans. Their gaze unfold, she hesitates to tell friend Saki. Tsukasa plans ahead. He calls, critiques Anzu's eggs, and proposes a tutor meet. Anzu grapples with guilt over the broken phone. Inquisitive girls hassle the teacher about Tsukasa, resulting in a comical phone interaction. At Tauter, Tsukasa is surrounded by gossiping girls. Anzu arrives with the same duo, piquing Tsukasa's interest. A flashback reveals Anzu's prior help to Tsukasa. The girls return, overwhelming Tsukasa. He questions her, bemused by Rina's advances. She apologizes for Rina and Yukiko, but Tsukasa assures her it's okay. In the park, Tsukasa vents about Rina's persistence, adding a touch of humor. Anzu expresses regret about the girls, but he offers understanding. They share a lighthearted conversation, their banter revealing his annoyance and Anzu's lunch bag quirk, creating a charming connection. Tsukasa notes Anzu's uniqueness, finding comfort in her presence. They discuss their disinterest in dating, setting friendship boundaries to prevent romance. He asks to store items at her place temporarily due to housing issues. Anzu agrees, reflecting on his soothing influence. During a call, Tsukasa details his recent endeavors. Anzu wants to repay for breaking his phone. Tsukasa suggests staying in her place for a month, assisting with chores and cooking. Anzu's wary due to Riri's potential romantic setups, but agrees out of guilt. The next day, Anzu faces reality. She's surprised by Tsukasa's culinary efforts. As they share a meal, he leaves. She reevaluates the situation, finding it not as bad as expected. Riri teases her for her dating sim life and choosing a disinterested Eichmann. Riri insists unexpected love can happen. The doorbell rings, revealing another Eichmann in a similar school uniform, shocking her. The Eichmann reveals that he's her childhood friend. Anzu's baffled by everything as Tsukasa wonders what's taking her so long. He opens the front door and sees her with her supposed childhood friend, who introduces himself as Shunta Hayami. Anzu tries explaining why Tsukasa's at her house, but Tsukasa departs. She takes Riri inside while Shunta and Tsukasa stare at each other in malice. In her room, she scolds Riri for his actions. She's unaware of Chunta, but Riri explains his background with game logic. She denies knowing him, although Riri claims they were childhood friends. He details Chunta's past, including his crush on Anzu since elementary school. Riri's spell leads to Chunta and Anzu chatting. Catching up, he mentions Tsukasa and questions his presence. She praises his kindness and popularity avoidance. A gust of wind creates a misunderstood romantic moment, later revealed to be caused by a beetle on her head. Chasing it, they receive Riri's intervention. Memories of a youth resurface and Saki joins them. Anzu expresses surprise that Saki knows Hunta, wondering if Riri manipulated things. Saki offers to fix her hair, discussing her new appearance with his amusing response. She appreciates his pleasant demeanor. At the subway, Rina confronts Tsukasa about leaving her in Yukika. He clarifies their friendship, refusing her number. He sarcastically takes his friend's number. At school, Tsukasa's friend briefs him on Chunta's skills and kindness. He worries Anzu might have feelings for Chunta, while his friends discuss Tsukasa's unique traits. Encountering two schoolgirls, they ask for opinions about Tsukasa. The girls dream of spending a day with him, boosting Chunta's confidence. 
One mentions his connection to Anzu, his childhood friend. He clarifies their relationship, insisting he wasn't flirting. During class, Saki can't join Anzu for lunch. Tsukasa invites her to join him, which Saki notices. Behind the school, Tsukasa informs her that she packed the wrong lunch. His friend Makabuto stumbles upon them, curious. They decide to eat together, and he brings up Rina's interest in Tsukasa. Makabuto shares details about his life, describing how living with sisters has shaped his views about females. She spots chocolate, but is blocked by Riri. She claims to be on a diet, leaving Makoto and Tsukasa puzzled. Rina and Yukika spot her and Tsukasa talking in school, and Chunta is directed by Saki to find them. Overhearing them discussing Tsukasa, Tsukasa and Chunta learn about their conversation. Rina asks her to set up a date with Tsukasa, but she declines, explaining Tsukasa's lack of interest. Before things intensify, a random school girl approaches Anzu, asking if she wants to walk home together. She mentions Chunta's search for Anzu and observes her conversations with Rina and Yukika, the school's most popular girls. She compliments their looks and status, embarrassing Rina in the process. The girl suggests Rina stay away from Tsukasa. Anzu recognizes her voice and items, realizing it's Riri in disguise. Shunta and Tsukasa reveal they overheard Anzu's conversation and were ready to intervene if needed. Anzu remembers Riri's inappropriate comment about her appearance and knocks her out. Afterwards, Tsukasa expresses gratitude to Anzu for having his back. Shunta inquires about Anzu's friend, and Riri introduces herself as Anzu's cousin. Riri persuades Shunta and Tsukasa to agree to a party at Anzu's house. Anzu worries Riri might be worse in her human form than her wizard form. At home, Anzu plans to dress down to save Junta from Riri's fabricated romance. She questions Riri about her human form, and Riri explains she wants to support Anzu's romantic endeavors. Riri intends to make Anzu wear something appealing, leading to a playful sumo-style fight between them. Riri tricks Anzu into falling into a trap and landing on top of Tsukasa. Anzu apologizes as Tsukasa wonders why he always gets hurt around her. Junta arrives with homemade fried chicken. They enjoy the meal, and Anzu loves it. Junta's sense of inferiority to Tsukasa is noticed by Riri. Anzu wants more food, but Tsukasa playfully mentions her diet. Riri suggests Tsukasa extend his stay, but he declines to avoid causing inconvenience. Anzu teases Riri and questions Junta's concern for her safety. She takes her wand and accompanies Riri for ice cream, with Riri pleading for it back. Riri's attempt to snatch it results in the wand falling into a mess, rendering it unusable. Meanwhile, Shunta and Tsukasa wash dishes. Tsukasa assures Shunta he isn't pursuing Anza romantically. Shunta's shock at Tsukasa's knowledge of his feelings leads to breaking a dish, but Tsukasa reassures their friendship. After the ice cream outing, Shunta expresses gratitude to Anzu and expresses a desire to visit again. Anzu agrees. Back inside, Anzu discusses Tsukasa's living situation with him. The next day, Anzu catches Riri trying to steal photos. She awkwardly bumps into Tsukasa heading to school. Chunta's friends try to provoke rivalry between him and Tsukasa, but he stops them. In class, Seki and some girls bombard Anzu with questions. The girls are jealous, but she reassures them they're only friends. Saki changes the subject and asks if it'd be cool for her and the others to have a sleepover at her place. Anzu arrives home while Tsukasa's at work and doesn't know how to spend her time without video games. Meanwhile, Chumta arrives at his household and greets his brothers. Chumta's mother tasks him with giving Anzu some food. She wakes up and hears a noise. She believes it's Riri trying to steal her things and rushes into the living room with a golf club. When she finds someone stealing possessions it isn't Riri, but an actual thief. The thief tries to flee but bumps into Trumta. Trumta wonders what's happening, but she informs him the thief was trying to steal her belongings. Shunta catches the thief while Anzu arrives with a police officer. Sometime later, her and Trumta walk home. She thanks Trumta for helping out and acknowledges him for his skills. After minor flirting, Trumta tells her he's glad she was unharmed. Tsukasa stumbles upon the two as they stare into each other's eyes. Anzu informs Tsukasa about what happened with the underwear thief. Shikasa laughs because he can imagine how she looked when trying to intimidate the thief. Trota gets a call from his mother, leaving Sukasa and Anzu alone. She asks him how Sukasa got off early, and he tells her it was slow, so he got off. Trota tells Anzu that his mother wants to talk with her. She takes his phone and speaks with his mother. She confirms that she'll be having Chunta stay with her while she's alone, startling her. She catches wind that this is all Riri's doing. The next day, we find Chunta moving into the Hoshino household. Anzu shows him the place alongside Tsukasa. 
Trenta will stay in the master bedroom, while Sukasa will stay in Amzu's father's study. Trenta heads to practice and Riri appears in wizard form. Anzu knocks him out because he admits to sending the thief into her home. Anzu secures a convenience store job for some alone time amidst Tsukasa's work and Trunta's baseball practice. Trunta catches them making lunches and Tsukasa's critique bothers Anzu. At school, Trunta's friends envy his lunch from Anzu while girls speculate if he's dating. Trunta's photo attempt turns chaotic. Tsukasa rejects a co-worker's date proposal due to fatigue. Tsukasa visits Anzu, agreeing to watch a show Saki recommended. They persuade him to stay. The next day, Shumta practices and Tsukasa asks Anzu to shop with him to deter attention. She hesitates, but Tsukasa insists, prompting Riri's intervention. He reveals she summoned an underwear thief to motivate her to buy better clothes, unveiling her wand's cleaning and spell-casting restoration. Riri enforces rules, transforming Anzu into a prettier version. Tsukasa's casual blush reflects his approval. They head to the mall, she's stressed by the unexpectedly date-like outing. Tsukasa's discomfort with attention leads her to suggest a mask. Tsukasa fears it would make him seem like a celebrity. Anzu wonders if Tsukasa's popularity has something to do with him moving to her city to attend school. We get a brief montage of them struggling to find clothes. After they've finished, Anzu worries she's falling into Riri's trap minute by minute. She tells Tsukasa to wait for her while she goes to the restroom. When Anzu's away, Tsukasa smiles from afar. However, girls start gossiping about him making him feel uneasy. As he waits for her, Tsukasa becomes more stressed out. Tsukasa flashes back to a moment with a mysterious woman and starts breathing heavily. Anzu arrives in the nick of time and tells Tsukasa to follow her to an antique store full of cat knickknacks. She finds a random cat necklace and wants it. Unfortunately, she spent all her money on clothes. Tsukasa offers to buy it for her as a thank you gift. As they head home, they bump into Chunta. He's jealous that they went out to buy things without him knowing. As they head home, Anzu's surprised that Riri didn't try pulling any stunts. At her house, they all watch a zombie flick. Anzu spots a roach on the ground and asks Tsukasa to kill it. Tsukasa asks Junta to lift the couch, but it looks like he's just as terrified by the roach as Anzu. Tsukasa kills it and Anzu praises him for his bravery. Junta's is ashamed of his useless status. While she comforts Trunta, Tsukasa mentions how he's the one receiving the most help. Riri notices Anzu's let her guard down and plans to introduce another Eichmann into the group. In the morning, Tsukasa informs Anzu that she's woken up late for work. She realizes she's late for an event and rushes out the door. As she's running, she realizes she's thematically role-playing a scenario from romantic thriller. She's worried she'll encounter a new Eichmann upon reaching the corner. Suddenly, the car rams into Anzu, who falls. A man in some glasses wishes to help her up, and she feels like it's safe. However, a strange boy exits the car and says it's her fault for running into the car. We find a new love interest who loves toast. He's a rich Eichmann's agent, Suchia, promising to give Anzu a ride to school. She apologizes to the rich Eichmann in the car. She wonders why a rich boy like him is attending a public school like hers. The rich Eichmann tells her that she must be flattered to go to school with someone like him. Anzu receives a text message from Saki and Shukasa as they drive. At school, everyone's gossiping about Anzu and the rich Eichmann. Before she enters class, the rich Eichmann asks her if she secured Suchia's number. He tells her not to get too anxious about awaiting a call from him. After he departs, more schoolgirls flock toward her, asking her how she ended up with Prince Hajiri Kogune, our rich Eichmann. The girls mention that there's an entire fan club dedicated to him. Shumta and Tsukasa stumble upon Anzu, surprised at her state. Makoto can't believe she's friends with Shunta. Schoolgirls remark on Anzu being surrounded by attractive guys. Days later, she meets Hijiri per Tsuchiya's arrangement. He dislikes her outfit, transforming her appearance. Hijiri buys her a dress and smaller heels, prepping for their date. She's irritated by the makeover. Hijiri misunderstood her car incident as manipulation. Anzu suggests paying for the dress but learns it's expensive. Anza gives back the items, rejecting Hajiri's advances. He's shocked. At school, Hajiri reflects on Anzu's attitude while girls flirt. She returns his purchases, leaving. Hajiri contacts Sochia. Anzu and Chunta plan to cook as Tsukasa works. She compares Chunta to Hajiri, wishing happiness for him. Riri stumbles upon them and taunts her. Hajiri and Sochia arrive. Hajiri congratulates Anzu for being the first woman not to fall for him. He promises to make her fall under his spell no matter what. At Anzu's place, 
Hijiri is disgusted by Riri and Trimta's presence as they introduce themselves. Hijiri tells Sachia to give Anzu a gift. She's shocked as it includes artisan chocolate and a virtual reality headset. Sochia reveals the next gift to be a group of pet kittens. Hijiri says he can make her wildest dreams come true, so she'll have to fall for him. Anzu asks how he knows what she likes, but he responds strangely. Riri grabs Anzu as they exit the room. Despite confiscating Anzu's three favorite items, Riri wants her to accept Hijiri's gifts since it'd be rude to get rid of them. She can keep her gifts if she falls in love with Hijiri. Meanwhile, Shumta and Hijiri discuss Hijiri's affection for Anzu. Hijiri says he doesn't like anyone as he only wishes to be admired by others. Trimta tells Hijiri Anzu won't become her friend just because he's rich or good-looking. Meanwhile, she tells Riri not to underestimate her. She scolds Riri for staging encounters, manipulating emotions, and using material objects to force a relationship. She heads back into the living room with Hijiri and Trimta and tells Hijiri to take his gifts and get doted on by someone else. She tells him it's best to boast about his money when he's earned it and not to use his parents' money to buy people gifts. Shunta approaches Anzu as she feels if she had agreed to Riri's conditions, Riri would have undone Shunta's manipulated memory. She apologizes for getting Shunta involved in this, but Shunta tells her not to worry. Shunta recalls a childhood memory where Anzu stood up for himself against bullies. At her workplace, Anzu's boss tells her they hired someone new. He reveals that the new employee is Hajiri. He tells her he wants to learn. Anzu scolds him for his poor customer service. She tries convincing her boss to let Hijiri go, but her boss shoots down that offer. He likes how he's bringing in more customers, and the customers haven't complained about his behavior. We receive a montage of Hijiri succeeding at his job. In her head, Anzu acknowledges Hijiri for his effort and sharp intellect. Before she departs, Suchia thanks her for changing Hijiri into a hard worker. Sochia explains that Hydri's father scheduled him to attend a public school because he wanted his son to learn mundane tasks at a mundane school. Upon meeting her, he gained more interest in ordinary hobbies. Anzu picks up her paycheck at a bank and can't wait to buy things. Anzu bumps into Hijiri, who happens to be picking up his paycheck. He asks her what he wants him to purchase for her but notes he doesn't have much. He makes it clear that he didn't participate in hard work for her. Although Anzu doesn't want him to get her anything, she reflects on his slight improvement. She asks him to get her some ice pops. They visit a nearby park and partake in the ice pops. He can't believe she wanted him to get her something low class. Anzu tells him to try his ice pop. Hijiri says it tastes cheap but not too bad. She starts falling for him but slaps herself out of it. She promises not to let her guard down. While Shikasa is cleaning her bathroom, Anzu stumbles upon his phone. She realizes a girl is calling him. Anzu's excited to see her new cat book. She realizes it's been about a month since Tsukasa moved in. She wonders if he has a new place to stay yet. She reflects on the message he received on his phone from the mysterious woman. Anzu argues with a pedestrian until a white-haired woman named Arisa intervenes. Arisa introduces herself as Tsukasa's older sister and Tsukasa arrives. At Anzu's home, Arisa thanks her for hosting Tsukasa and discusses his family situation. While Tsukasa takes a call, Anzu explains her station incident to Arisa. Arisa shares Tsukasa's past, noting an incident in junior high changed him. Arisa thanks her for helping him. Tsukasa returns and arranges to watch a movie with Makoto. He and Arisa go for a walk, discussing his unfamiliarity with girls. Tsukasa admits Anzu is different from other girls. Anzu agrees to let him stay longer, hiding her concern about Riri's potential traps. In the present, Arisa grasps Tsukasa's reluctance for her to see him smiling, understanding his connection with Anzu. Before Arisa could ask him if he likes her, Tsukasa says he and Anzu are friends and he's comfortable with it staying that way. Tsukasa arrives and Anzu can't stop thinking about how kind his sister was to her. She admits that she takes her appearance more seriously since they went shopping together. Before Tsukasa can tell her why he lives alone, he backs out but promises to tell her another day. When Tsukasa exits the room, Riri arrives and says Anzu's starting to adopt feelings for Tsukasa. However, Riri acknowledges her failed attempts at getting her involved in romantic developments. Riri asks her to go on a mock date with her so she can find out what love is like. Riri transforms into a boy, shocking Anzu. In spite of her refusal, Riri offers to buy her the stellar cat pajama outfit she wanted from Tsukasa's mall date. Anzu accepts the offer. On their date, Riri grabs her hand and she's disgusted by the scenario. Anzu tries fleeing the date, but Riri persuades her by offering her more cat items. 
Riri suggests going to a movie theater to kick things off. They go with a romance film to help Riri understand romance better. Sukasa and Makoto exit the theater and spot Anzu holding Riri's hand in boy form. Riri informs them that he's Anzu's cousin Ryo Fushiji. She drags Ryo to a nearby corner while Sukasa finds their closeness strange. She questions if Ryo's planning anything shady and prepares herself for the worse. Ryo notices other couples aren't doing anything romantic as he criticizes the film in his head. He notices Anzu crying from the film and laughs. As they leave, he taunts Anzu for her crying and she's shocked by his harsh words about illnesses. The two decide to get some boba drinks. While waiting at a traffic stop, Ryo can't stop making poop jokes. The two get into an argument over sharing and manners. Anzu and Ryo bump into Sachiya and Hijiri and Anzu's shocked that he's not working. Hijiri claims he doesn't work until the evening. He's spending his time observing convenience store workers for tips. Anzu's surprised that he hasn't quit working yet. Ryo starts drama between himself and Hijiri by claiming Anzu is his girl. She punches Ryo and tells Hijiri that Ryo's her cousin. He doesn't mind either way. Ryo scolds him for his poor dating skills. However, Hijiri declares he's attained better knowledge of common folks since then and can entertain Anzu better than Ryo. She grabs Ryo and tells Hijiri he's trying to play one on him. Anzu tells Hijiri not to take Ryo seriously or ask her on a date. She and Ryo depart from them. She asks Ryo why he tried adding Hijiri on and Ryo says, with a rival, her Eichmann will be more serious about pursuing her. They continue their date and meet a montage of them doing things together. They sit at a nearby park and discuss their fun experience. Ryo prattles on about romance and Anzu notices he lacks knowledge about other things. As they're walking home, Ryo thanks her for helping him out. He tells her to prepare for his onslaught of plans and she responds by saying she'll crush them all. Ryo gives Anzu a peck on the cheek, disgusting her. At the same time, Chunta crashes into a bike rack. Anzu checks to see if he's okay and asks Kunta if he saw Ryo kiss her. Trunta shakes his head while she informs him that Ryo is her cousin and that he was joking around. The next day, Anzu spots Junda practicing baseball with his teammates. She would accompany him but decides not to because she worries that Riri will try something. Anzu thinks about the cute baseball assistant that was with Trunta at practice. She thinks if Junta wasn't under Riri's spell, he'd fall in love with her. Anzu bumps into Ripperin and Eamon, who she hasn't seen since elementary school. They decide to meet up at the Zaragari Cafe. Once they arrive, they exchange some greetings and discuss their childhood experiences. Ripperin and Eamon recount how Anzu liked playing video games with the boys. She recalls playing Cat Ranger with a boy named Tanta, who was a chubby kid. Ripperin confirms that Tanta is actually Chunta. As Ripperin and Eamon talk about Chunta, she recalls her time with him. In their flashback, Anzu invites Trunta over to her house to play some Cat Ranger. She's frustrated that she didn't remember Trunta's real name. Anzu invites Trunta, her childhood friend, to hang out with her friends Ripperin and Amin. They're awestruck by his looks and invite him to their reunion, but only when they learn Anzu will attend does Trunta agree. Amin jokes about them dating, causing tension. At home, Anzu confronts Riri about setting her up to meet Trunta. Riri explains Junta's feelings are genuine, refusing to manipulate emotions. They confess to orchestrating past meetings where Anzu ignored Junta, who tried to approach her despite baseball commitments. She demands her belongings back, but Riri insists on pushing her into relationships to value love over material things. Anzu forces Riri out to change. In a flashback, she searches for Tanta, her cat, while a boy claims he left. He implies Tanta isn't interested in her cat ranger game, but she disagrees. Back in the present, Ripperin and Emin discuss things with their friend Ryuya. Anzu surprises her friends by ditching her usual cat theme attire. At the bowling alley, Ryuya suggests a game where the losing team reveals their first crush. She eagerly accepts, motivated by her dislike for Riri. Boys admit their crushes, including one on Emin. Ryuya's answer about his kindergarten teacher hints at his past feelings for Anzu. She leads her team to victory. Air hockey follows, with the boys again losing and treating the girls to ice cream. Ryuya challenges Anzu to a singing competition, which she wins by a wide margin. Amid singing, Amin exposes Ryuya for cheating on a girl. Anzu receives a message from Chunta, and the group's attention shifts. Chunta arrives, stunning everyone with his transformation into a successful baseball player. Amin declares Anzu and Chunta as a couple, but Chunta denies it. Ryuya's jealousy boils over, and he leaves. Anzu chases after him and assures him of their friendship. Ryuya confesses his crush on her, but she won't date a cheer. He admits his lingering feelings for her. 
Anzu explains she prefers trust in a partner, hinting at Trunta. Trunta overhears Ryuya revealing his long-standing affection for Anzu. She clarifies they can only be friends, leaving him crestfallen. Raiporin and Eamon laugh and poke fun at Ryuya for getting rejected. Trunta approaches Ryuya and tells him he wanted to check up on him. Ryuya apologizes to him and understands that he worked hard to get where he is now. After Anzu, Rikporin, and Eamon depart, he tells Trunta that he lied to him about Anzu not wanting to play Cat Ranger with him when they were kids. Ryuya says after that development, Trunta never spoke with Anzu again and moved away. Trunta says it's okay since he's been spending more time with Anzu now. Ryuya says he's not giving up on claiming her heart despite knowing Trunta likes her. They both head back to the song booth, where a rejection party awaits them. The next day, Anzu is leaving work and stumbling upon Trunta, Tsukasa, and Sachiya. Hijiri introduces himself to Tsukasa. He departs while Anzu walks home with Trunta and Tsukasa. She ponders all the fun she's had with these two and eventually runs into Saki, who is shocked to see Trunta and Tsukasa with her. At Anzu's home, she explains to Saki why Trunta is staying at her house. Saki confirms that she decided to stop at her house because her brother kicked her out of their house so he can invite his drunk friends. She explains that she texted her father about her brother's rude behavior and his friends, so he'll take care of it. After some chatting, Anzu and Saki head into Anzu's room and discuss some things. Anzu thinks of a plan to tell Saki about Riri. When she tries to tell her, she receives a weird stomach issue and rushes to the bathroom. Tsukasa bumps into Saki. Saki tells him that they're alike and says he doesn't need to worry about Anzu as she's a trustworthy person. Meanwhile, Anzu sulks in the bathroom and Riri pops up. They tell her she can't reveal anything about the romance plan. Riri reveals Anzu's binding contract to maintain confidentiality backed by magical consequences. Saki suggests a summer festival, which triggers memories of her past insecurities. Anzu had helped Saki build confidence and navigate a troubling relationship with Mori, who turned out to be manipulative. Anzu confronted Mori, putting a stop to his lies and harassment. She and Saki reminisce about their strong friendship. The following day, Riri proposes the group attends a summer festival. Despite initial hesitations, Anzu, Tsukasa, and Shumta agree. They dom Yukadas and head to the festival where Shumta disappears into the crowd. She grabs his hand, making the situation feel romantic. Ryuya and the others spot them holding hands. Ryuya takes Shumta aside and asks who the yellow-haired boy is. Shumta tells him his name is Tsukasa, and he's a friend from school. He tells Shumta that he needs to ask her on a date even if Tsukasa doesn't have an interest in her. Anzu interrupts their discussion as Ryuya and the others part ways. While they're walking, Tsukasa starts feeling anxious with all the people staring at him. Seki bumps into Makoto and greets him. While they are discussing, Mori and his friends stumble upon Saki and the others. Mori's friends taunt Saki, and she starts calling for Anzu's help silently. Makoto picks up on the situation and makes up an excuse to leave with Saki. Once alone, Makoto tells Saki that he knows she was feeling uncomfortable around Mori. Saki thanks her, and the two decide to visit some booths. Meanwhile, Anzu is eating her caramel apple while Tsukasa looks around. He notices she's wearing the bracelet he got her during their shopping trip. Anzu asks Tsukasa if he wants to take a selfie with her. When she snaps the photo, everyone jumps into the picture. Anzu's surprised to see Hijiri at the event, but he says he's here to see the fireworks. He hands Tsuchiya some shaved ice and tears up. After the event, a strange woman is looking up photos of Tsukasa. We find a woman smiling as she says she's located Tsukasa. Meanwhile, we find Hijiri and Anzu on a date at an arcade. Hijiri insists they play a crane game nearby. Anzu discovers that the toy Ryo, Riri's boy form, is still in the machine. He remembers Ryo's rude remarks. Anzu drags him to a picture booth and tells Tsuchiya to follow them. A mysterious individual in a blue dress follows them with them knowing. At the photo booth, they take a group photo. Alone, Anza remarks about how great they looked in the photo. Before she heads home, a strange woman calls out to her. Introducing herself as Yukana Kishi, she informs Anzu about her ongoing relationship with Tsukasa and asks about his current living arrangements. Meanwhile, Sochio alerts Hijiri to someone tailing them throughout the day. On their way home, Yukana reveals that she's been seeking Tsukasa for a while, tracing him through a picture of him and Anzu at the festival on social media. Tsukasa spots Yukana with Anzu, causing him to drop his groceries. Sensing Tsukasa's unease, Anzu steps in between them. Inside, Anzu recounts the encounter to Tsukasa, including Yukana's claim of being in a relationship with him. Tsukasa's reaction is extreme, rushing to the kitchen's trash can to vomit. 
He explains that Yukama is a stalker and expresses gratitude for Anzu's support. He reveals how it all began when he assisted Yukana after she fell. Subsequently, he noticed her everywhere and started receiving unsolicited gifts from her. Tsukasa recounts incidents like passing her on the street where she comment on his clothes or send him gifts. His family notices multiple online accounts under his mother's name and surmas that someone's impersonating her. Shikyun approaches Tsukasa at a traffic signal, questioning his lack of enthusiasm for her gifts. In light of this disturbing history, Tsukasa asks Anzu to stay by his side, thanking her for being there for him. He tells her to stop making accounts under his mother's name. Yukana ignores it all and approaches him lustfully. She grabs his hand and this creeps Tsukasa. He steps back. He tells her to stop sending him gifts and greeting him. Unfortunately, Tsukasa continues to spot her staring at him. At home, while he takes a sip of his beverage while doing homework, he feels delirious and sleeps. Yukana enters his room and cuddles next to him. She mentions how Tsukasa cares too much about what others think, but she loves how he comes to see her every day. She tells him she's her one and only. We receive a few snapshots of his Twitter feed, where many of his friends and peers scold him. Tsukasa's father slaps him because he's mad that he let someone like her enter his life. Arisa sticks up for her brother, but Tsukasa's dad hates his son becoming a people pleaser. Tsukasa walks home and encounters Yukana. She tries getting close to him, but Arisa stops her. Arisa warns her to leave her brother. At home, Tsukasa is scared to leave his home because he doesn't want to encounter Yukana and doesn't want to hear people talk ill of him. Tsukasa falls to the ground in tears as his mother comforts him. He tells her that he wishes he never helped that woman out. He informs Anzu that his mother, homeroom teacher and area helped him move to this city so he can start a new life. He says Yukana is the reason he never wanted to get close to people. He tells her he feels like a pathetic loser who didn't have the courage to stand up to his father. His father told him that none of his classmates would believe him because of his indecisiveness. Anzu hugs Tsukasa and tells him she wishes they became friends sooner. At night, she notes that she informed the police about Yukana. Everyone comforts Tsukasa during this time as Arisa plans to stay with them to guard Tsukasa. In Tsukasa's room, Arisa tells him that social media can ruin your life. Although Tsukasa says she doesn't have to watch over him, she tells him it's okay for him to rely on others. Meanwhile, Yukina's friend tells her to stop gathering public attention. It's bad enough that her brother has to help her with her outrages. When her friend talks ill of Tsukasa, Yukana tells her to stop. She reveals that she used to get bullied at her workplace, but he was the only boy who was kind to her, talked to her about things and saw her every day. She says despite her age difference, she was in a great relationship with him. She's furious that Anzu's entered his life. Yukana plans to murder her. At work, Hijiri notices Anzu's changing behavior and asks her what's wrong. She tells him not to worry about her. She's happy that he's showing her support. Anzu and Hijiri's boss tells Hijiri that she left her phone. He plans to have Tsuchiya locate Anzu. Suddenly, Saki and her brother arrive at the shop. They tell him that Anzu told them to visit her here. In a dark alley, Anzu discovers she left her phone at the store. Two menacing figures approach Anzu, revealing they were hired to harm her. Just as one of them lunges, Shunta arrives and apprehends one attacker, while Ryue subdues the other. With Tsuchiya, Saki, and her brother joining the scene, the assailants are coerced into surrendering. To everyone's astonishment, Saki's brother recognizes one of the thugs as a friend. Questioning his motives, Saki's brother learns that Yukana had blackmailed them into targeting Anzu. Grateful for their rescue, Anzu thanks her friends in the park, though she's puzzled about the text messages she supposedly sent them earlier. She confides in Arisa and Shukasa at home, who suggests Shukasa should stay and confront the situation head-on. As Anzu opens her bedroom door, she encounters Ryo Riri's male form, who confesses to sending messages to her friends. She inquires about using magic to deal with Yukana, but Ryo clarifies that his magic only facilitates love. An offer to remove Tsukasa from her life is proposed, but her fury prompts her to throw Ryo's wand outside, rendering his powers useless. Chunta and Tsukasa discuss the incident with Chunta asserting that Tsukasa isn't to blame. Chunta swears to protect Anzu from harm, confessing that he began playing baseball to become someone she would admire. A flashback reveals Anzu's past remark about wanting to be with a sporty guy, motivating Chunta to become a baseball player. As they walk home together the next night, Yukana continues to tail them closely. The next day, Hanjiri and Anzu discuss Yukina's whereabouts. Anzu reports she hasn't made any moves and that Arisa and Shikasa will be walking home with her. 
Hijiri tells her to let him know if she ever needs Suchiya's help. When she leaves the store, she encounters Yukina. She's worried but knows Tsukasa will arrive any minute. Yukina is attempting to kill her with a knife. Hijiri asks Ryo where Anzu is, meanwhile Anzu is bleeding as she stares at Yukana. Suchiya tells Hijiri to continue working and let him, Tsukasa, Arisa, and Ryo locate Anzu. Ryo is worried about Anzu as he looks at his dirty wand. Tsukasa spots Yukana and Anzu. Yukana spots Tsukasa and rushes toward him with her knife. Multiple thoughts and memories flow through Tsukasa's head at a rapid pace. Tsukasa knocks Yukana to the ground and orders her never to come across him or his friends again. She thinks he's playing around, but Anzu reiterates his words. The cops arrive while Anzu falls to the ground. At the police department, one of the officers escorts her to her friends. Everyone is relieved she's okay. Tsukasa's father arrives and grabs his head. He forces him to apologize to Anzu alongside him. He tells her he plans to take Tsukasa with him, but she stops him. She tells Tsukasa's father that he will be staying in the city with her and scolds him for his poor fatherly behavior. At Anzu's house, she speaks with her mother on the phone. Tsukasa strides into the room and Anzu quips that her mother will be landing soon, causing him to express his gratitude for her always looking out for him. With a whimsical flashback to their first encounter at the store before Anzu's phone-shattering incident, it's revealed that Tsukasa had been bombarded by texts from multiple girls at his previous school. Subsequent scenes unveil his past interactions from his perspective, where Anzu's unanticipated interventions often steered him clear of girl-related entanglements. The heartwarming embrace between Anzu and Tsukasa ensues. The following day, Anzu's mother arrives and she proceeds to elaborate on the recent events. Arisa suggests that Tsukasa would prefer staying with Anzu for an extended period, and her mother raises no objections. The inquiry about Anzu's father prompts the revelation that he stayed back to care for Momohiki. Later on, Arisa queries her mother about Yukana's impending consequences, but the details remain unknown. In parallel, Yukana's uncle offers apologies to Hijiri for his niece's actions, prompting a forgiving response but also a stern warning about the future. Riri observes the scenario from atop a tree, pleased with Hijiri's proactive stance, that they vow to take precautions for their safety. In a mental facility, Yukana's determination to win Shikasa's affection remains unwavering. Suddenly, Riri makes a dramatic appearance, revealing his true identity as a wizard without magic due to his damaged wand. The scene shifts to darkness, leaving a lingering sense of foreboding. Time passes and Riri visits Anzu, sharing that he's dealt with some matters, Engaging in playful banter, he bids her farewell. She rendezvous with Arisa, learning that Yukana has developed amnesia, erasing all memories from the past few years, including Tsukasa. Tsukasa rejoices at the opportunity for a fresh start. Meanwhile, Anzu's father arrives with gifts, and as she cuddles Momohiki, she realizes that her cherished hobbies are at her fingertips. Tsukasa and Shunta discuss Tsukasa's evolving feelings for Anzu, with Shunta's comic assertion that he always knew Tsukasa would fall for her, and that he never stood a chance. Tsukasa assures him not to fret, as Anzu likely views them both as friends. Calling out for Riri, she inadvertently summons Kate, a new wizard, who reveals that Riri is no longer assigned to her. Kate discloses that Riri is banished from the human world due to a taboo he committed, using magic for personal reasons evident in erasing Yukana's memories. In a blend of seriousness and humor, Anzu relays the tale to Shunta and Tsukasa, both incredulous yet ultimately accepting. Tsukasa credits meeting Anzu for helping him conquer his trauma, while Shunta echoes his sentiment, appreciating the reunion it fostered. Kate outlines that Riri's inability to access the human realm stems from the severity of his transgression, tampering with Yukana's memory of forbidden act. Tsukasa wonders why Riri would do that, and Kate explains it's because Riri was personally invested in her and not for work purposes. She said Riri was about to face the worst punishment, but thankfully the company vouched for him. Riri will be subjected to menial tasks in the dungeon for the rest of their life. Anzu explains to Chunta that the company is covering up Riri's actions to maintain its public image. Finally, Kate says Riri negotiated the return of Anzu's three-finger hobbies. She swipes Kate's wand and threatens to dirty it if she doesn't bring Riri back. Anzu tells Kate she already informed them of their mission, so there's no point in going against her. Riri makes a phone call and informs her that management allows Riri to return for 15 minutes. Kate summons Riri and Anzu asks him to turn into Ryo. Riri complies and Anzu puts them in a chokehold for disappearing without telling her. Riri is willing to accept any punishment for his actions. However, he's surprised when she thanks him. Tsukasa thanks him, but Riri feels like they should forget about him. 
Amzu tells Riri she can't forget about him. She tells Riri to tell her what he wants. With tears in her eyes, Riri tells Anzu they'd like to stay with her. Kate tells Anzu Riri's time is up but she asks Kate to put a spell on Riri, so he can stay in this world. Riri says she can't cast spells if it doesn't pertain to her love life. But Anzu says she can use spells if it does pertain to her love life. She proposes a theory that there could be a 0.001% chance that Riri can become her love interest. Anzu exclaims that she can't just swipe her potential love interest away like a sneaky ninja. Kate, with a wave of her magical wand, grants Riri permission to continue their escapades in the human realm. After this roller coaster, we find Anzu, Sukasa, and Junta strolling together. She spills the beans that her family's jet setting off overseas, leaving them in a threes company situation once more. Hajiri pulls up in his ride, all cool and composed, and dishes out his greetings. Anzu extends her heartfelt gratitude to Hajiri for being the superhero that thwarted Yukana's uncle's cleanup campaign. He browses Mitt in puzzlement, and before he can pull a Houdini, Anzu's onto him. While she's engaged in thoughtful contemplation, Riri pops up like a magical jack-in-the-box, this time in her girl form. Sporting a Cheshire cat grin, Riri unveils a new rule with the gravity of a dramatic TV show host. Drumroll, please. If Amzu doesn't prioritize her romantic quests, her precious belongings are on the line again. Riri warns with a sly twinkle in her eye that if she doesn't clinch a fairy tale ending with someone by high school graduation, her stuff will vanish into thin air. Anzu's indignation shoots through the roof, while Riri merrily taunts Tsukasa and Shunta with the tantalizing prospect that they might just be the chosen one. On a parallel plane of existence, Kate's on the prowl for her next mission, which turns out to be none other than Yukana. In the realm of high school adventures, Anzu, Shunta, Tsukasa, and Saki embark on their daily pilgrimage to the Kingdom of Learning. The season concludes with Riri flying into the sky in his wizard form. He tells the audience that Anzu's romantic love life is slowly but surely advancing.